Hi, my name's Chris. Some people refer to me as the dad of YouTube. And today we're gonna to be talking about how Danielle Bergoli, AKA Bad Baby, is an awful influence for the internet. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about mental health and what I like to do is pull different topics from the YouTube community to try to teach you how to improve your mental and emotional well-being. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And real quick, I am getting started this week on my next book, Rewire Your Anxiety. I know a lot of you have asked me when it's gonna be out and all that stuff, so hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So anyways, make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter because I already have a bunch of topics laid out, but I am going to ask for some feedback from you So I, because I wanna make sure I put topics that will benefit you in that book. So make sure you're following me at The Rewired Soul on Instagram and Twitter. Now, jumping into this topic of Danielle Bergoli, AKA Bad Baby. First off, I am so good. I am so good to each and every one of you. A lot of you have requested this video, so I was just at the gym and <laughs> I endured bringing up Baby on Snapchat um, to get some thoughts and opinions on this thing, and yeah, so let's jump into it. For those of you who don't know who Danielle Bergoli is, or Bad Baby, um, she rose to stardom, if you will, on Dr. Phil, all right? She's the catch me outside, how about that girl, right? Turned into this meme. And I was actually talking to uh, Tristan last night, and like, I guess Danielle Bergoli went to like this like camp thing, and she actually started to do it a little bit better. But it's like, why? Why didn't she stay better? Like, she started to get on the right track, why didn't she stay better? And it's what I keep trying to teach all of you guys about these positive feedback loops, okay? Like, for example, like, she became this, like, internet celebrity because of her bad behavior, all right? Her mom also piggybacked off this fame because of her mom's bad behavior. Like, this is how people like Jake Paul and Logan Paul are created. You do something awful, you get a bunch of positive reinforcement for it, you will keep doing that. Like, what is the incentive for Danielle Bergoli to just be this, like, better person? You know what I mean? What's the, what's the incentive for even her mother to be a better person? Like, all their cars, their money, their houses, you know, um, their stardom, all of these things are based off of poor behavior, all right? So that's why we're gonna be, like, kind of talking about the influence this has on other people. So. One of the issues is, and one of the reasons I bring up other creators on here is because this influences people watching it, right? So I try to sit back and imagine who the audience, who is the core audience for different creators, right? And for Danielle Bergoli, I, I don't even know, but I would assume there are, you know, younger people watching this. And you gotta understand, because you guys do it too. You guys do it too. Like, we sometimes watch people to um, kind of get our own confirmation, uh, confirmation bias going, right? So imagine a, a bad kid watching Bad Baby, right? And seeing this and saying, oh, well she does it, she's rich, she's famous, she's a rapper, okay, maybe I should do that too, right? It's very difficult, especially for younger people, to separate that, okay? So this sometimes gives people an excuse for their poor behaviors because they see somebody who is quote unquote successful doing these things. But if you were to really look at the dynamic between Danielle Bergoli and her mother, like, is that healthy? Is that a relationship that you would want with your mother? Like, is the money, the fame, you know, the all that other stuff that comes with it, is it worth it to have that kind of toxic relationship? In my opinion, absolutely not. Now, what do we do if our child is looking at Danielle Bergoli like she's some kind of role model. Like, I was sitting there, you know, not sitting there, I was standing there, on the treadmill. I was sitting there and I was watching, I was watching and I was like, if for some reason, if for some reason, my son, my 10-year-old son, just really got like into Danielle Bergoli, like, I would be watching with him, having conversations with him, and explaining why this is not a good thing, all right? So all of you parents out there, like, it's all about just monitoring and knowing what your kids are watching. You don't have to be like this like super secret spy, but know what they're watching and then have conversations with them. Ask them like, 
What do you think about this? Do you think this is good or bad behavior? Do you think this is healthy or unhealthy? One of the reasons I have this channel is because I want the conversation of mental health to be something that we're doing more often, especially with our kids. All right, next, next. So let's talk about this dude, Frank. So Frank in Bringing Up Baby or just in real life in general, Frank is Danielle Bergoli's bodyguard okay and they talk about this they kind of build this storyline of like how it's this like nice sweet relationship between her and her bodyguard because bad baby didn't have a father figure in her life so this guy frank is like her bodyguard and i'm like okay that's cool and you just get introduced to him in like the first episode or so so you're like all right so he's the one who puts his foot down and all these other things Right, and then there's also some tension between you know the mother and Frank because the mother has like no control over Danielle, but Frank she often listens to him, and that's on a good day, by the way. But as I was watching it, like this is something, this is something that you you see a lot of people do. They're like, oh, that's like my little sister, or oh, that's like my daughter, or oh, that's like my little brother, or oh, that's like my son. When it's really just a friendship, that's all it is. Like there was one scene where I was watching where. <laughs> I wanted to get into the whole thing because it was absolutely ridiculous. But right in front of Frank, Danielle and her mother are just going at it, just talking crap to each other, just saying awful things. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, right? And Frank is just sitting there like, I'm just gonna mind my own business, okay? So if he was truly, if he was truly like this father figure, like, for me, when something like this happens, it's like, okay, both people, let's settle down, let's get some space, calm down, let's come back and have a mature conversation, right? Well, that's not what happens. Eventually, when Frank decides to open his mouth and talk to them about this situation, like, he pretty much starts saying, oh, well, she's kind of right and she's kind of right. And I'm like, wait, what? What are, you, what are you talking about? Like, I'll admit when I was growing up, um, I had a lot of, not like, like major defiance issues, but I always had an issue with authority, right? And I, as a parent, I often, you know, look at, you know, okay, I need to, you know, be friendly with my son, but I also have to have respect from my son. So he listens and all these other things, right? And you see in this kind of dynamic, Danielle Bergoli is only 15 years old and they treat her as if, you know, she is this grown adult woman. And if any of you have been paying attention to my channel and I talk about the brain development, by the way, if you don't follow my channel, you have no idea why I'm pointing at my hand, but the prefrontal cortex, logical decision-making, emotional regulation, impulse control, morality, empathy, all those things, Danielle Bergoli is about 10 years away from that part of the brain being fully developed. So to treat her as if she is a 20 something or 30 something year old woman is absolutely the wrong way to go about this because she has not biologically developed in that way yet as far as the brain goes, okay? So the last thing I wanna talk about that really weirds me out is a few weeks ago I made a, a video about the creepy relationship between Millie Bobby Brown and the rapper Drake, okay? Like, everybody kind of agrees that their relationship is kind of creepy. But then I watch Bringing Up Baby, I'm like, am I crazy? Am I the crazy one? Because Bad Baby, her entire entourage is filled with 20 or 30 year old people. I am not kidding you. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, how is this, how is this being normalized, right? And they talk to her like as if she's a friend, like she calls them up and they'll come like pick her up and like all these other things. And they'll talk to her like about like boys and girls and all these other things. And it's not, it's not even like an uncle or aunt situation. It's just weird. And part of it is, is like the whole just Hollywood thing and the stardom thing. And like we are having children grow up too soon. And again, like, you don't even have to believe me. Just look at the history of child stars and where they end up and all these other things. You know what I mean? Like, it is this constant cycle. And one of the reasons is, is because we value money, fame, things, 
over like our mental health and our emotional well-being. And that's one of the things that happens. Like there are certain issues with a child only having adults in their support group. You know what I'm saying? And Danielle has all these like reasons, but I'll call them excuses for why she doesn't hang out with people her own age. But the adults in the situation need to be encouraging that because that's what she needs, all right? But anyways, um, you're all welcome for me torturing myself watching this. And uh, yeah, if you've checked it out, um, I'd love to know your thoughts on it. But anyways, anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul so I can get some feedback from you about my upcoming book, Rewire Your Anxiety, all right? And I wanna send a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to help support the channel, get involved in our monthly Q&A and other goodies, you can click or tap right there, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.